One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my gosh, it doesn't stop. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. Today, we are going to be doing a tiny guide video on Honkai Star Rail's new event, the Ethereum Wars event. Now, I have been grinding out this event over the past couple hours. I'm gonna be honest, this has become probably my favorite event in Honkai Star Rail history. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've done almost all the content so far. I defeated the secret final boss, which I won't spoil. I competed in the tournament and won. And today, I wanna share with you some of my strategies and the team comp I use to win the tournament. So without further ado, let's get in to the video. But before we start the video, I just want to show you guys that only a small percentage of you are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you could just take a minute to go down and click that subscribe button, it would really mean a lot to me. And so maybe we can help more people beat this new event. But with that all being said, let's continue to the video. All right, so let's talk about Ethereum Wars here. There are a couple things that I have yet to do in this event, so I will use that to show off my new and improved team comp. Hello there, March. You may have been our teammate throughout the entire tournament, but now we are enemies. Let's have a hyperlink match. Okay, so here we go. We're going to be facing March 7th. Now, here is the team composition, which I use to beat literally everything in the game. It consists of the goldfish thingy-majig, the turbo trotter, which is what I chose to call my little warp trotter. If you didn't pick turbo trotter, then what were you thinking? That was literally the best option there. And then we have the Aromontan gatekeeper and the silver main cannoneer. Now this looks like a bit of an odd composition, but let's explore it a little bit. We're not going to go too in deep to it right now. I just want to show it off before we go into the logistics of it all. So let's start up the battle here. Now, first things first, you're going to notice that we really don't have the type advantage in this battle. Our big carry, the Aramontan Gatekeeper, which is our gold class character, is weak to half of the enemies on the field. So you think that's going to be a big problem. But let's see here. First thing I always like to do, use support, support the Gatekeeper. I'm not going to go too deep into the details on our first attempt, though, of using this comp. I'm just going to kind of show it off so that you guys can get a better idea of what we're going to be doing here. We're going to summon our goldfish. We're going to single target the captain. We don't have the type advantage, but that's okay. Boom. 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 Now you're seeing what's happening here, right? You're seeing what I'm going for. Every single time one of those little goldfishes goes off from our Aramontan gatekeeper, the silver main cannoneer is also going to act. Let's watch this again. So we're going to support again, support our target. We're going to freeze him. Boom, boom, boom. Immediately with the cannoneer again. And then once our goldfish act again, one hit, two hits, three hits, four hits. This is such an OP strategy. Now, the main problem with this strategy is that you'll have a lot of times where if they target down the cannoneer, you're kind of just screwed. But there are a couple ways to work around this, which we'll go a little more into later. But as you'll see here, we really don't have to worry too much about it. They come close to killing our enemies, and sometimes they do. Like in that example there, we lost the goldfish, but that's okay. We're not worried about losing the goldfish. The goldfish isn't a big deal because... We can literally summon two more goldfish right here. And look at that. We got our goldfish back. Just as easy as that. Our Warp Trotter died. It's fine. We have a specific card on him so that he is able to live. We go again. Boom. And we're going to get four more hits here. Four more hits. Again. Again. Oh my goodness. It's too OP, bro. It's too OP. And just like that, we've almost won. Let's go. Even though we had the type disadvantage that entire fight, we were still able to come out on top. Now let's go into why that composition is so completely overpowered. Let's head into another battle. Why don't we take on Topaz this time? 
Topaz, Topaz, Topaz. It's time to fight. She actually has one of the more difficult teams, consisting of the IPC grunts, which are actually very difficult to kill. But hopefully with our little team that we have here, we'll be able to come out on top again. Now this time, instead of just clicking buttons and not really explaining, let's go into a little bit more of the intricacies of this team setup. So the first thing which is really important is that the Silvermane guard here is always gonna go first. The reason he always goes first is because of his talent ability, which whenever you enter battle, his action is going to be advanced forward by 60%. So basically no matter what, he's always gonna go first on your team unless you use some sort of expansion ship. His little skill here is the most important part of his entire kit. Basically, it's just a little follow-up attack, and whichever ally we choose to support, whenever that ally attacks, this follow-up attack is going to trigger. So for example, if we support our automaton here, whenever that automaton attacks, it's now going to trigger the cannoneer's follow-up attack. Now to maximize this and make this do as much damage as humanly possible, I have put the high load, low speed chip on him, which increases his attack by 90%, but reduces his speed by 30%. Now this is actually super good for him because he doesn't need a lot of speed. We're not looking for him to go high in the turn order. The only thing we really need from him is to do high damage with his follow-up attack. The other chip I have on him, which is deep clean, isn't one that is that important. I just like to have it in case there is anything on the opposing team, such as a goldfish, which could potentially ruin a lot of things. And that's why I have that chip on him. And that about covers the Silvermane Guard and why he's so important to this composition. He is probably the most crucial element to the whole thing and is the character we end up using more than anybody. The automatons are going to get a couple turns here. Generally, this team is pretty slow, but once we start going with our big man here, this is when we really start getting into action. But you'll notice here on the bottom that he gets his burst immediately. That is because of the way I have set up his expansion ships. So the first thing we have on him is just a basic attack and HP upgrade. Just an all-around good stat effect. But the next two are really important. The first one we have is saturated activation. When our turn begins, we're immediately going to get three energy and immediately get our burst. And then the second part we have here is efficiency optimization, which basically is after entering battle, our ultimate is only going to cost two points instead of three, meaning that we get this burst up a lot more. The whole point to the automatons kit is just getting his burst up as much as humanly possible because that's how much we really need it. And then once we have his burst up, that is when we start going all in on the enemies. As you'll see here, three attacks, four attacks, five attacks, and it just repeats on repeats on repeats. And that is the efficiency of this build. Now, the next crucial part of this team is, of course, our little boy, the Warp Trotter, who we all know and love, who is going to be our main source of healing. He is the one who is basically saving us from death. As you'll see here, we're going to come very close to death a lot, and it's going to cause us a lot of problems. But because of our little Warp Trotter, we're generally okay. Let's take a little look at how we have them set up. So if you don't know, the Warp Trotter's abilities all revolve around trying to keep your party healthy, his skill is going to heal, and then his ultimate is going to enhance his basic attack to also include healing in it. And then also another nice little thing about him is his talent is that after he receives any attacks, he's going to increase all our allies' attacks by 30% which is a very nice little buff. Now, the nicest thing about the little warp trotter here is his expansion ships. You're able to put four total on him, which I believe is the only character in the entire game that you can do that for. The first one I have on him is reduce his own attack by 75% but increases max HP by 60%. He is the one who is taking all the hits for my team, so we need him as bulky as possible. The reason he is taking most of the hits is because he has this little light cone here called Firewall, which increases his max HP by 40% and also greatly increases his chances of being targeted by the enemy. The Warp Trotter is our dedicated tank, and it's always going to be the one taking all the hits for our team. And then we also have two purple expansion chips, first one being Emergency Rebuild, boot which basically just saves us uh in case we die we actually get a, a reboot technically of our warp trotter and instead of dying 
he will come back to life and support us a little longer. And then the last one here, Parallel Enhancement. After using any attack, we're going to increase our own damage received, which is generally not too good and does lead to the Warp Trotter dying quite a bit. However, it also increases the damage the enemy takes by 25%, which is a big debuff on the enemy. And that is our little Warp Trotter Boys kit. As you can see here, he has the vulnerability right now which means that the enemy also has it. Oh yes, and something I forgot to mention about our cannoneer. This is the part of the kit that drastically changes everything. His burst ability, the ultimate, lock and load, increases an ally's attack by 50% for two turns. If the target ally is not this unit, we're gonna regenerate two energy. Now, if you guys remember from earlier, our gatekeeper, one of his expansion ships is going to decrease the energy that we need for his ultimate to two. So every time we use this ultimate ability, we're immediately gonna get back our burst and use it immediately. Boom. And now look at the side table there. Oh my goodness. Look how many goldfish are going in order. And keep in mind, that is eight total attack. Because every time one of those goldfish attack, the Silvermane Cannoneer is gonna follow it up. Let's see it here. Boom, boom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my gosh, it doesn't stop. Come on, keep it going, keep it going. Boom, boom, boom. Now just please go for the Warp Trotter. Thank you, finally he targets Warp Trotter. So it can be a little finicky, but there we go. We, we, we got the Warp Trotter target. And now look at this. We immediately restore all our HP. Just like that, all our HP is restored on all of our allies. And we're good to go. Now this gives me a good opportunity to talk about our last member of the team here. The Goldfish. Now I save this one for last because in this case it is quite literally least is last. Because he is the least important member of this team. You can really swap the Goldfish out with just about anybody. You just kind of want to match whatever typing. But I specifically like the Goldfish because it has the ability to apply debuffs, which is something that I find comes in helpful a lot. But this is most definitely the least crucial member to the team. The only thing you really need is the Cannoneer, the Oromon and Gatekeeper, and the Warp Trotter are really the three most important members of the team. You can really switch this Goldfish out with a couple different characters, which we will get into later. But as for my Goldfish setup, he is on two different expansion ships. For his blue one, he has something called Backstage Enhancement. When the Goldfish isn't on the field, the Goldfish's attack is going to increase by 50%. Basically, that just means all his DOTs are going to increase by 50% is essentially what that is. And then the last one here, the Computation Lock, is going to increase the Goldfish's attack by 75% but disables its ultimate. Now, the reason this is good is because the ultimate is useless. The ultimate literally does nothing. You can read the description here, uh, fires out spectacular fireworks that don't really do anything, but hey, they're nice to look at. <laughs> That is quite literally the ultimate description. It is nothing. And that's the reason Computation Lock is so good on the Goldfish. And yeah, that's my Goldfish kit setup. We'll talk about some replacements for him a little later. But this is who I choose to have in this team setup. Let's use his attack. Boom, boom, boom. Now we have the Gatekeeper, who is the most OP member of the team. We're gonna boom, boom him. Get him going. He's dead. Another one. Another one another one keep it going it doesn't stop and then we're gonna restore all our hp nice get the upgraded warp trotter going in here all our team is at full hp we're gonna support again and by this point we've basically won the battle he can try to throw in a couple enemies every now and again i'm not too worried i think we have this one in the bag boom switch out get it going again start up the goldfish again here we go blast him again Boom, boom, goldfish goes again, and again, and we win. And that is how you absolutely destroy this new event. With that team comp, you will win anything, I promise you. And in fact, this setup, you can actually get pretty early on into the exploration phase. I believe you'll actually have everything you need for it by Cloudford, which is really early. You get the automaton, gatekeeper, and the goldfish in Cloudford, you get the Silvermane Cannoneer, 
in the corridor of fading echoes and then you start off with the warp trotter so by the second dungeon you already have everything you need for this composition and you can go on to crush her to space station crush the great mind and go on well into the future now if you are struggling a little bit with that team comp let me give you a couple more pointers uh, which should be able to help you out so sometimes you know maybe you're doing some harder content you can't seem to get it generally i think no matter what this team comp should be safe but maybe you're really struggling don't know the scenario but let's say you need a new unit you keep dying let's talk about it so instead of the goldfish in the fourth slot here instead who you'd want to replace the goldfish with if you're really really struggling is the intrace eningium obedient dracolian yeah that's a long name essentially this is just another healer the whole premise of this little guy's kit is that he consumes his own hp to heal your other unit he also has a revival mode so that he can't be killed off immediately. He can even reset this revival even after he uses it once. If you use his ultimate again, you can revive again. You throw this little guy in the slot. You got two healers and the Trotter and the Dracolian. You're basically guaranteed to never die with your Cannoneer and your Gatekeeper. You got two healers in the backup slots. You'll be good to go. You never have to worry about anything, but generally I like to play a little more cocky with the goldfish and that's how i like to play the game but you play the game how you want to play the game frankly there's so many different team comps left to explore so many possibilities honestly i guarantee i haven't thought of any of them yet but i wanted to put out a little guy just to help anybody who's struggling with this new content to hopefully help you push your team to the next level so you can beat all the content and get all of those sweet sweet stellar jades but with that all being said, that is going to be the end of our video for today. I hope this helps some of you. I hope you're able to beat this challenge. It can be a little tricky, but with this team comp, you should be able to do it. Anyways, guys, that's going to be all for me today. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.